Okay, let's have a problem from uh, C E board exam. Example 8. A three-story building has interior columns spaced 8 meters apart in two perpendicular directions. The designed loads for the building are as follows. So, dead load is 5 kilopascals, which is in the roof. 7 kilopascals, typical for each floor. So that's for dead loads. Zero live load, 0 kilopascals in the roof. We have 2.4 kilopascals in the third floor only and 6 kilopascals from second floor uh, in the second floor because this is a three-story building to be reduced even if it exceeds 4.8 kilopascals because actually the provisions of the code is not even the examiners were only provided with this table without the restrictions but here I put the restrictions but we still have to reduce this uh, live load at the second floor because it, although it exceeds 4.8 kilopascals, supposedly it is not to be reduced. But in the board exam, because students cannot memorize the restrictions of the code, and unless otherwise, this is the, the popular question in the board exam, so they cannot memorize in the Examiner did not also put the whole paragraphs or sections about how to reduce type loads. So these are the definitions. You are already familiar with this. This is for SI. So L, reduce design live load per square meter of area supported by the member. LO, reduce design live load. Which are this given here. Per square meter of area supported by the member. The reduced live load defined by the above equations is limited to not less than 50% of LO for member supporting one floor, especially the column at the second floor. It supports only one floor, which is the third floor. Or not less than 40% of LO for the member supporting more than one floor. That's the column at the ground floor level. It supports more than two more than one floor. So its reduced live load should not be less than 40% of the load for that case. So no reduction is allowed for structures used for public assembly, garages, or roofs. So the condition here which is the live load is not also reduced when the load is exceeding 4.79 kilopascals is not mentioned here and that is intentionally done so that all these live loads here can be reduced so what is the total actual load in kilonewtons in a column at the ground floor level due to service live load so total actual load on a column at the second floor level due to service live load so that's would that would be live load reduce live load at the third floor plus plus live load at the roof level because there is no live load at the roof level it's just the reduced live load at the second at the third floor level what is the total actual load it can be to the column at the ground floor level due to service live load again and third what is the total dead load in kilonewtons to the column at the ground floor level you may answer 33 number three first before one and two because number three is easy to answer because this is just dead load so instance the dead load would be five at the roof and seven for the two floors so five plus seven plus seven quantity tributary area is eight square or 64 so but let's begin so for number one, reduced live load is LO quantity 0.25 plus 4.57 over square root of influence area. The influence area is 4 times 8 square. So there is no problem with that. For the column at the second floor, this is the top plan view. This is the 
tributary area which is 8 by 8 so 64 so p at the second floor is equal to roof load plus roof live load plus reduced live load at the third floor times the tributary area which is 8 square so the reduced the roof live load plus the reduced live load at the third floor because we are considering the column column load axial load at the second floor column so it catches or it carries the load at the third floor live load at the third floor and the roof live load but remember there's no roof live load so it is just l3 that must be reduced and column at the second floor uh, supports only one floor so So if this is the column, that's the ground floor, second floor, and we have third floor, and then the roof. So uh, AI is 4 times 8 square. That's more than 37.5, so we can reduce the live load. So L3 is equal to 2.4, the live load at the third floor. And 0.35 plus 457 over 256. That's that should be compared to 50% of 2.4, which is 1.2. So 1.286 is greater than 1.2, so that's why we apply 1.286. Substitute into this formula: 64 times 0 plus 1.286. So the force or the load carried by the column at the second floor is 82.3. Next, for the ground floor column, it supports reduced live load second floor and third floor, and it supports more than two floors. So, supposedly plus two live load, but this is zero. So we will consider only L2 and L3. For L3, we already computed that. So, we compared this to 50% of 2.4, so 1.286 lies. And for the second floor, 6 times 0.25 plus 4.7 over 2.56, so that's 3.214, which is greater than 40% of 6, so add up 3.214. Substitute into this formula, force of the column at the ground floor level is 64 times roof acquired load 0 plus third uh, second floor live load plus third floor live load reduced live loads so that would be 288 kilonewtons and finally for the total axial load for a column at the ground floor due to dead load so we have roof and second dead load, second floor dead load, third floor dead load, and roof dead load times tributary area 8 square. So 64 times at the roof level it is 7, and for live loads at the second and third floor, 7, 7. So 5 at roof load. There is a dead load at the roof. Then dead load at third and second equal to seven kilopascals. So times sixty-four, we will get one two one six kilonewtons. So that's it.